Welcome back to the Steve and I show. Adam, how's it going? Happy holidays. Last show of the season. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great, Stephen. Uh, yeah, I can't believe it. 2022 is really flown by. Yes, yes. Hey, just imagine the beginning of the year. Didn't we do the 10th anniversary chats yeah. and everything? And Yeah, yeah that's yeah. crazy. That's Number crazy. 10 in the books, but it feels good. What do you have uh, planned? What do you and Abby have planned for the holidays? Uh, so actually, we leave to Thailand tomorrow. Okay. And uh, we are going to a wedding for a friend there. So we'll be there for a little bit. And then we're going to uh, South Korea for a little bit. And then we'll be in Atlanta for a few days. Uh, so oh. I'll let you know. Uh, you? And then uh, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Right. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, then back in D.C. So, yeah, yeah, pretty busy, pretty busy December. How about you guys? Yeah, I'm just I'm going home to Virginia. But it was funny, Chike. So I was telling you I had my party over the weekend. <laughs> so Adam comments on there. Thanks for the invite, exclamation mark. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I know I'm out of town, but, you know. It's That's still why, because you're in D.C. Still appreciative, you know. I, I you know, I could have made, I could have booked some flights. Yeah, Taiwan, some Korea, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I see, I see how it goes. I got you next year, I got you next year. <laughs> well, I'll let y'all get into some movie reviews. Sure thing. So I saw Pinocchio, which is the second Pinocchio movie I've seen this year, but this is the Guillermo del Toro stop motion animated feature that came out about a month ago on stream uh, on theaters and then uh, it's on streaming now uh, by Netflix. And this movie follows the story of, uh, you know, we all know Pinocchio, Geppetto, and Geppetto it's a little more darker. It's a little more intense. Uh, and I won't spoil too much, but Geppetto has a real son and his son dies. And so over the years after mourning, Geppetto decides to make a wooden puppet. And this is where Pinocchio is born. And it's kind of the Pinocchio story, you know, where he's going to school and learning things. But Guillermo del Toro gives it that twist. And if anyone remembers Pan's Labyrinth, uh, shape of water there's always a little bit of that kind of uh fun fantasy element to his films and in this one it's uh got a lot of fun characters but it also takes place in the backdrop of 1930s italy so we're under a fascist regime in italy at the time it's mussolini's in, in the film at one scene and so it gives a little bit of that twist instead of the usual adventures that Pinocchio goes on, especially to Pleasure Island. That's not in this movie. This is all going to be a little bit of a different spin on it. But overall, it's good. It is it is animated stop motion. I wouldn't call it quite a kid's movie because there are some dark themes and elements in it. But it does have that feel to it. And the world he builds is very nice and entertaining and if you have Netflix and you're looking for something fun and different, definitely check this one out. Again, it's not for everyone. You, I will also say, you know, if you're a fan of Guillermo del Toro's movies, you'll like this. If you're not, if you didn't really get into Pan's Labyrinth or anything like that, this might not be for you. But otherwise, uh, highly recommend. Uh, great cast as well. Ewan McGregor plays the cricket. David Bradley from uh, Game of Thrones and... Uh, Harry Potter fame plays Geppetto and there's really just a good cast involved in with this. Ooh. Is that, is that the only thing you saw? Yeah, that's the only thing I had a chance to see. Uh, you know, as I mentioned last week, we'd moved. So we're still in the process of moving and lots of boxes to still unpack. I hear you. Uh, so the first thing that I saw was a um, docu-series on Netflix called Killer Sally. And Killer Sally is about a uh, former professional bodybuilder, Sally McNeil. And she actually uh, gets convicted of murder for killing her husband, Ray McNeil. Both of them were bodybuilders. Both of them competed and um, living in the same house with two children. And both of them are taking steroids. And someone's not being faithful in the marriage. I don't want to tell you too much of the story, but it was a very good documentary and they follow uh, what life is like for the life of a bodybuilder and what that means to them professionally. And they talk about their finances and they talk about 
some of the things that professional bodybuilders have to go through in order to make a living, a decent living, and how that weighed in on their marriage. It was really, really interesting, and it opened my eyes to some of the world of bodybuilding. Uh, when I was younger and I first got into working out, I used to really be into bodybuilding. I, I used to follow it back when um, Arnold and uh, uh, um, uh, Lou Ferrigno used to compete. Uh, but um, many, 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 many years ago. But uh, I've since jumped off of it, but I didn't know these things. So it was really eye-opening to find out like some of the stuff that they would go through just to compete and how uh, you can develop an addiction to steroids. Pretty interesting. So it was a good documentary. Check it out. Uh, it's on Netflix. The next uh, Netflix film I saw was called Emily the Criminal. I will give this movie five stars. This movie was so good in the sense that it, the character's named Emily, they put her in a space where you related to her pain of her financial woes. She owed a uh, student loan debt that she was over her head with. And because of her past, she had some blemishes on her record that impeded her from getting a well-paying job. So she basically was a cater waiter trying to pay off her student debt and she just couldn't get catch, she couldn't get ahead. I think there was a scene where she makes a payment and there's a substantial payment and she called to see like what her new balance was. And they told her what the balance was and she questioned because she said, you know, I just paid this amount. And they said, oh, that was just the interest. So you just paid that payment that you made was just to the interest. It didn't touch the actual amount owed. So you got to see her woes and how much she tried it was how much she failed. And then someone steps into her life and gives her this opportunity um, on the illegal side of things and she becomes really addicted to it and how it starts to infiltrate her life. It's pretty interesting. And, and I'm, I'm pushed to believe they didn't market it this way, but I'm pushed to believe that it was probably based off of a true story to some degree. Mm. Yeah, because it's, it's really intense and it's really good. And I'm starting to like the actress that plays her. Her name is Aubrey Plaza. Mm -hmm. And she's also in this show that I watch on HBO called the, the White Lotus Hotel. I think it's called, yeah, the White Lotus Hotel. And she's really good in that as well. And uh, just check it out. It's pretty good. It's on Netflix. And so the final film that I saw was Will Smith's Emancipation, directed by Antoine Fuqua. Um, so this was the film that was going to be uh, I guess the, the conversation piece after the slap from the Oscars. This is what they were doing all of the, um, the PR for and the damage control to make sure that this film didn't really, because I think it was supposed to be out earlier and they kind of pushed it back because of the whole drama mm -hmm. around the slap. And um, I think Antoine Fuqua made a statement about this film is more important than the slap. Well, um, some people are saying that they did they weren't interested in seeing another slave film. And I understand that and I get that. Um, I think that if this film had came out when it was supposed to come out and the slap didn't happen, it probably would have had a better reception. I'm not saying that it's having a bad reception, but I just think that the circumstances surrounding the film, the subject matter of the film, it kind of fell into what we as a country was going on, you know, at that time with the whole racism stuff. It would have fit in perfectly and we would have had a better reception than now. Uh, Will Smith is acting, he, his acting is pretty good, but um, me personally, it didn't really move me, not really. I didn't, I'll say this, the feelings and the emotions that came over me for 12 Years a Slave, I did not have for this film. And, you know, all the racism and the whipping and the injustice and the mistreatment, it didn't hit me the same way. I don't, I, I can't explain why, but the film didn't hit me the same way. And the film is not in uh, Technicolor. It's not color. It is, uh, um, I don't even know what to call it because it's black and white for the most part, but it has like uh, minuscule pieces of color in it. Hmm. And they're using color as uh, like another character. 
because you're not getting full on Technicolor. It's like hues. So it's almost shot in like a black and white, soft brown, but you get like leaves, you get your greens and you get your reds. It's interesting. I thought it was an artistic art, artistic choice. Um, I haven't seen anything like that. It, it was, that was new, but um, could I have seen it on TV, on the streaming service? Yes, I could have. Didn't necessarily need to see it in a theater. I don't know. I don't know that any, did you see it, Steven? No, I haven't seen it yet. Uh-uh. Because I saw it was okay. on Apple on TV, and I don't have that right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, w- I was going to ask if either of you saw it and seen if uh, that whole slap thing. I know it hasn't been getting good reviews, and I've no, I don't know if either of y'all are on Reddit, but it's been advertised like every other ad is for emancipation online. So they are promoting it a lot. But uh, yeah, I've heard heard mixed reviews and and what's so ironic is i just watched an interview with will and oprah this is when he was promoting his book but i just watched the interview recently and he was talking about his uh desire and his addiction for success so he he was uh so focused on each film and the fact that he wanted to when it each one that came after the other to be greater. Like he wanted to be number one all the time and he became addicted to that. And um, how he had to work out of that for the sake of his own mental well-being. And I wonder if he has a film that doesn't do well, which probably would be um, maybe an anomaly because his films normally do well. They may not do better than some others, but you know, this film in particular, because it's tied into so much in his life right now. It comes after a major event that happened. If it doesn't do well, I wonder if he's going to be okay. Yeah, I mean, he did. So I don't know. He's done a lot of stinkers in the past like decade. I feel like the ones he done with his son was the one where like his son after Earth or something like that. Yeah, but he didn't do it after a slap at the Oscars. (laughs) Well, no, but if he's addicted to success, then and then what's the one where he plays the clone he's a clone of himself gemini something like yes. that that one yes. was kind of a stinker too that was good though ah well steven you think everything's good but oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i don't know i think he's done a few stinkers and wild wild west was a stinker like yeah. so he's got a i mean i i understand his interview but i think he's giving himself a little more credit than than he deserves. And, and, and I think from the from the texture of this film, I think that this film was probably anticipated to be something to submit to the Oscars. Oh yeah, but you know that's that's totally out anyway. That's totally out anyway. But mm-hmm. um, he can still you can win the Oscar. Him. He just can't go. <laughs> He's not gonna win. But I don't yeah, even think, I don't even think that it it would be um, received. I don't think they would receive it. It would be mm. too controversial for the Oscars to even receive it. Mm. Yeah, and I mean, he's, you know, he's done Ali, which was his Oscar, like, worthy film. Was this, was he even at the same level in this movie as something like that? So, okay. So me personally, I don't like, and this this is based off of a true story. There's this, uh, I, I'm mm-hmm. sure you've all seen the photo. Um, yeah. What's it called? Whipped, whipped Peter? The, the, with the slave and they have the picture of his back with all the, the uh, mm-hmm. bookmarks. It's based off of that slave, right? Me personally, I don't, I don't really care for Will playing other characters that are, that have lived, you know? I don't like him playing uh, biological, you know, real biographic, you know, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. I like for him to create characters. I like him funny. I like him to, to play, um, especially in the scientific science fiction era arena. I like him better in that aspect. You know, his action films, they are better to me. Not that this film didn't have action. Do you know who was good in this film? Ben Foster. Ben Foster was excellent in this film. And I'm not saying that Will did not act. He acted his ass off, but I just, I just wasn't, I wasn't buying it. Sorry, yeah. Will. Well, you and the critics agree, so. <laughs> I just didn't see it. It just wasn't there for me. I've seen him do a lot better. The pursuit of happiness. Oh yeah, exactly. These are oh, yeah. Okay. He's done great roles. So yeah, yeah. Watch so out, y'all, y'all be slapped next. Keep talking, jump. 
yeah. I'm not going to answer my door anytime soon. <laughs> Hello? No. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, lastly, I don't, I don't have any details about it because I actually just started watching it today. And it's been on Netflix for a while, but this uh, animated series called Intergalactic, it's pretty mm-hmm. decent. It's, um, so far, Kenya Barris is one of the creators. Um, so far, it's, it's been pretty good. So nice. I have nothing. I've been watching Christmas movies. Any um, other any other good Christmas movies? They're all the same. I mean, yeah, yeah. Actually, I'll take it back. There is one. Um, I saw it yesterday on Netflix, and it's uh the guy from Insecure. Um, someone what happened was. So I have a friend of mine who loves Christmas movies as well. And I bumped into him at the party. And I said, I've been watching Christmas. He said, me too. He said, did you see the one with, uh, with um, I can't think of his name. Uh, hold on, give me a quick second. But the movie was, it was pretty good. It, was pre- it wasn't like uh, the same old, you know, go to small town kind of situation. It's more of, um, so his character and there's this, baker she's a woman she owns like a bakery and um i say okay anyway so she's good one it sounds like those are the main characters but they're both dating others right and so they happened um the 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 uh, guy she was dating and him they both go to tiffany's somehow he bumps into him he falls they switch they switch jewelry not knowing and they take it on to their significant, their significant others. Uh, the insecure character, he is planning to propose to his um, his girlfriend. The other guy was just buying his girlfriend some earrings. But because when they presented the gifts to their significant others, the one girl was like, you want to marry me? She was kind of shocked. And then he saw, he was like, what is she so shocked at? And he saw the ring. And he was like, yeah, I do want to marry her. You know, maybe this is what I needed. And so it goes down this whole rabbit hill. They end up meeting um, the insecure character and the woman they meet somehow and it becomes this whole thing. But it, it turns out actually really good. Like, so it's not- you're, what- talking, you're talking about something from Tiffany's, right? Something, something, Tiffany's. Yeah, something, something from, from Tiffany's. Tiffany's. Something and, the, Tiffany's. and the gentleman's name is Derek Sampson. We may have Derek Sampson on the show come next year. You might well get his name together. Yeah, well, if I have the information, I will. But uh, <laughs> no, uh, no, but but it was really good, and it was interesting to see him a different character than what we see on Insecure. But um, but yeah, it was a good. It, that was a really actually good Christmas movie, and I'm not for Christmas movies that are two hours long. Yeah, you guys see ninety minutes, I'll watch it. You know, if it's if it looks good. But um, that was actually a good one. That caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting So that. since we're talking about Christmas movies, I want to plug my friend's movie, Miss Tiffany Yancey. She wrote a movie. It's called Holiday Heartbreak. It's playing probably on Tubi or BET. Probably okay. BET R or Plus, one of them. But check it out. It's called Holiday Heartbreak. Okay, definitely will. Definitely will. It was funny because I was watching another movie last night and a friend called, you watch another Christmas? I said, it's not a Christmas movie. This is a murder. <laughs> What a Christmas murder was! I know it's just a rip. <laughs> good, good. There's nothing to a Christmas. Anything coming out the pipeline that you're excited about? Uh, I do want to see Glass Onion: The Knives Out sequel. Mm. I, I know it was in theaters for a brief moment. They pulled in. Now it's going to come back around Christmas. That's the big thing for me. Uh, again, not that excited about Avatar two, so probably going to wait on that one. Yeah, I don't. I don't have anything in my sights right now. Not right now. Well, I'll be watching I Want to Dance with Somebody, uh, the biopic with Houston that comes out uh, the 23rd of December. I want to see that one. Because, you know, there have been so many documentaries and TV uh, projects, but this is the one that the family's behind. And so I'll be curious to see. They said it tells, I saw an interview with Clive Davis, he was saying that people knew, they've seen the tabloids and everything. This shows the full totality of who she was, but mm-hmm. really celebrates her talent. And okay. so the, the woman who plays her, she was saying how she's been sitting with this movie for two years between when she got booked and the research and everything. To, uh, her name is Naomi. Um, um, to actually now the movie's being released. 
And um, she was saying that she had to learn, because she she's British, she had to learn Whitney Houston. She said she knew, she knew of the music. Um, she said she first remember seeing her when she was like six. She saw her when she did the TV movie um, Cinderella for Brandy. Uh, she said, I always heard her music, but that's why I remember seeing her at that young age. And so it's kind of full circle for her. So I've seen a lot of clips. They have a lot of trailers, a lot of little things they're promoting with. So I'm curious to see how they deal with it. So we'll see. Nice. Yeah, I I do want to see uh, a, actually two things. I think I mentioned it last week. I want to see the best man, the the um that final chapter. Yeah, and I want to see um. It's I can't think of the name of it, but it stars Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren, and it's basically the prequel to the Yellowstone series, which Kevin Costner um, yeah. stars in. He created. I'm really, really interested in that because Yellowstone is like the best show on television right now. Everybody I don't know. I saw Andor. Man, I haven't seen Yellowstone, but... Everyone says uh, Yellowstone is like... Yeah, I just, I don't know if I'm into those soap operas, but... Yellowstone is chance. that work. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the new dynasty without all the... Yeah, and is that a the good thing? The glamorous fanfare. It doesn't have all that. It's more greedy. Yeah. It's greedy. Maybe. You know, I, 1882 sounded interesting, and the one you're talking about, 1932, sounds interesting, yeah. a little more or less like soap opera but we'll see. Yeah. There's also a movie coming out with um, Eddie Murphy and uh, Neil Long, and what's the comedian? Uh, I saw it. I'm sorry. I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no surprise you are, Adam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what else is new? Uh, he's hilarious, though. What's his name? I think I saw what you saw, Stephen. What came to my mind? Uh, Jonah, was... Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. Was and, there uh, you Eddie people Murphy. or Candy Cane Lane triplets? It's called um, You People. Yeah. Yeah. It comes out next year, but um, uh, that it comes out uh, on the twenty seventh of January. That one it looked funny from the trailer, but people are um, because King and Boris. Uh, Barris, he's the um, direct the director of this, and I've saw a lot of feedback because it seems like a lot of his projects are saying are about mixed couple interrac inter interracial relationships. And but he saying, writes about what he knows. That's right. I mean, but they're saying they they say he has a complex about it, and so that he wants to push it on everyone else. I don't see the big deal. I think he does great work. But um, I mean. If if you had someone who was writing who happened to be gay and they were writing films about homosexuality, would you say right. something about that? He's yeah. in a mixed marriage. I mean, you know, social media. That's what I'll say. I was like, there, I was like, uh, when the trail the trailer came out the next day, social media re uh, reacts to, you know, his new movie, and of course they had something to say. But I don't. Uh, What's shocking to me is there's another Beverly Hill Cops movie too. Uh, about the Beverly Hills Cop movie coming out. Yeah, next year also. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, Holy, so yeah, he, can, uh, yeah, he um, everything's coming back, I guess. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I think it would be a success. I think it would be a hit just simply because we already can relate to the characters. It's something already established, but it's new. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, y'all. Happy holidays to you, and uh, I'll see you in 2023. All right, sounds good. All right. All right, we'll be right back after this.